Good morning. It's Monday morning at 7am, so I just thought I'd give you a quick start of the week tour of the garden and show you a few of the things that are going on. I'm afraid the tulips have now finished, they've passed the best. These are the tulips which I planted quite late in January, but they've had a really, really good show. But unfortunately now, they have reached their end, so... I'll be moving these out of the way and bringing something else in to replace them. The parterre at the front of the cottage is doing incredibly well. Growing brilliantly. I'm going to leave this this year. There's not going to be any cutting or trimming of this this year. I'm just going to leave it and let it get bedded in and mature. There's my three hydrangea Annabelle, which have just taken 15 cuttings off. So I hope I haven't taken off all the flowering heads and in fact I definitely haven't because there's one I love Annabelle now there's two Annabelles there's Annabelle and there's Annabelle strong and this is not the strong version so this will require some support now there's the lilac which I cut down and it had some beautiful blooms on but once again simultaneously almost with the tulips these have gone over uh, lilac, wonderful tree. This was quite tall, almost up to that wire, but it was leaning and it was damaged and it was getting dangerous, so I just chopped it off. And look how it's recovering. It's growing out of the old wood there, and it's also growing out of the base down here, so we'll have a lovely lilac bush here. I've got another lilac to show you in a minute. Let's have a look at the trough. Look, hens and chicks. Semper vivums. You'll have seen these in another video. What this was a trough I found in the front garden. Look at them. They're all starting to propagate and multiply. Tiny, tiny little babies coming out of the side of each one. And this is why they call them hens and chicks. That's the hen, and these are the chicks. Look. Some of them are quite tiny. That will expand and cover this gravel. There we are, hens and chicks. Let's go and have a look at the Mediterranean scented border. Look how big these lavenders have gone. Enormous. And the olives, I've just given them a really hard prune. Four of them, lollipop olives. One, two, three, four. Just given them a really hard prune. I also pulled back the weed fabric and the gravel and put some slow-released plant food at the bottom there. So these will all start to uh, come back into leaf. In about a month to six weeks, that will be a lovely dome of lovely lime green olive leaves soon. And here are the thyme. Just to remind you, this border, the Mediterranean scented border, has got lavender, rosemary and thyme in it, as well as these olive trees. And this is the thyme. Now, this thyme here, along with the other three, so there are four, all came from one small plant which was about this big, about as big as that pebble. And I divided it into four smaller plants and just stuck it in the earth at the edge of the path. And look how big they've gone and how beautiful they are now. They are flowering, look, beautiful, tiny little flowers. Now, somebody asked me on one of these tours to slow down a bit, so I will slow down a bit. We're going to come to this bamboo in a minute because I've got something to show you which is quite fascinating but in passing over there where that blue truck is this is where I had all my colocasia last year this year this is going to be turned into a new pond a little water feature so I'm going to dig a square hole actually a rectangular hole this big dig it all out remove the soil dig down and there's going to be a rectangular pool and then this fish over here is going to be placed at one end gurgling water so watch this space for that now let's go to these bamboos because I was worried about these I put them in and one of them in fact three of them went like this look and I was thinking oh dear we've lost that one but look down here at the base of these bamboos this is why you need this bamboo barrier because these are the new stalks that have just appeared almost as fast as asparagus and come up there's one 
there's another and if you look closely they're all over the place one two three four all the way along here's one look just erupting out of the earth and there all the way through so this is going to form a lovely dense hedge of bamboo all the way up here to divide this area off from the rest of the garden that is official bamboo barrier uh, you can see it um, on my website on my channel i'll put a link to that product in the description box below this just in case you're interested but that's bamboo those are green ones and these are golden ones some arum lilies some new tetrapanics which we've just bought apologies for my neighbor's dog i've just called these tetrapanics because i was distracted by the dog obviously they're tetra they're trichocarpus and that's a tetrapanic let's have a look in the secret fern garden it's all really starting come to come back to life look let's go down here we've got shuttlecock ferns here some beautiful evergreen ferns the ground is going to be covered in mind your own business we've got some wonderful hostas we've got empress woo and jurassic park it's all surrounded by these amazing tree ferns there's pan in the distance and again the small patio which i installed the mind your own business is starting to grow over there so soon this will be a lovely green enclosed space all the way through there these hostas the empress woo and the jurassic park can grow up to a meter tall so watch this space they're going to be amazing now then let's go to the exotic tropical border because i've got some exciting news gingers up there which we'll go closer to is a ginger now i left these in the ground this year i also left all of the cannas in the ground and look it, we had a really cold winter this is why this is significant i always dug the cannas up but this year i left them all in the ground look canna 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 all coming up and now i did put four inches of manure on top that there is a ginger and look at this this is a tetrapanix this tetrapanix just looked like two dead twigs until about three weeks ago and now those dead twigs have all produced leaves and there's another little plant a little pup coming up next to it now that is one of those So those leaves will grow over the summer. Let's have a look at another ginger because down here is a Himalayan ginger, which I thought had gone. But look down there, look. That's it. There, there, and there coming up. This is the, the up lighters for the night time. Through there, another gin, uh, another canna. And a musifolia that doesn't produce flowers but the leaves will grow all the way up there almost like a banana plant talking of banana plants there's the musabasdew which survived the winter wrapped of course and there's crinium red hot poker colocasia pink china down here look stayed out all winter coming into its own again and more cannas at the back there that's an old hellebore that was uh, there was a big hellebore here which I, I transplanted and it must have self-seeded but look look at this bloom look at that amazing white lime green bloom on that hellebore and this has a really strange kind of smoky tobacco-y smell right over to the bay trees which I rescued from a neighbour who actually didn't want them because they were so unsightly outside the back door and they, they donated them to me so that was wonderful I repotted them give them a really hard prune let's have a look at this look leaves leaves not only coming out of the end of the branches but also coming out of the hardwood look, look at that amazing how plants and nature has the power and the ability to survive that i would say probably in about two months will be a dense bush again an olive tree i rescued 
from the garden centre. I got it at a reduced price. Again, repotted it, pruned it back, and it's all starting to flourish again. Again, I think probably within four to six weeks, we'll have a dense mass of leaves on there. Look, I've just put my hand behind that one so that you can see it. This is my olive tree experiment down here. Had two identical plants. Mm. One of them, I completely pruned back, trying to kill it almost, just to see how resilient they are. And we've got no signs of life yet, but we'll keep an eye on it. That's what I call keeping a watching brief. And I'm going to compare how that one does to that one. Let's make our way round to the raised beds at the back of the garage. And on the way there, let's just revisit these Sempervivums. These were the spare ones when I planted out the trough that you've just seen. And I just made a little trough with two pieces of wood. Look at this again. Hens and chicks. Hens and chicks. I've no idea what I'm going to do with these. If you're anywhere near Nantwich and you want one, let me know when you can come and get one. I can't send them out yet because I haven't got a uh, plant passport issuing license. These are the new raised beds which I was given to do a review on. They're amazing things. I've not quite filled these two yet, but this one's been filled. And this has got asparagus crowns in it. I'm hoping for 20 years to have asparagus out of that. Let's see if there's any signs of any asparagus emerging. I only did it last week, which is late. You're supposed to do it in spring. So mid-May is late, nothing yet, but I'm pretty sure we'll get asparagus. Sweet fennel, I found that in the drive. Put it in this thing. The thing about sweet fennel is you rub the leaves and it's just got this amazing aniseed smell. And through that gate there is the wildlife pond, which is where we're going next. But before we go through that gate, let me just spin round, spin back and show you that lilac that I referenced earlier. Look at that there. Isn't that amazing? Just going a little bit closer to that, just to get the, uh, the magnificence of it. And the air, especially of an afternoon and evening, is just full of that beautiful lilac scent. Come on, let's go down to the pond. If you've been following my channel, you'll know all about this wildlife pond. Started it 12 months ago and I've literally just finished it at the weekend, put the plants in. It's six metres in diameter. It's got a flexible liner in it with underlay beneath. Um, the neighbours gave me these pebbles. I found all the rocks in the garden and made it look quite naturalistic. And now I've put some plants in. We've got two water lilies, one over there, one over there, water hawthorn. All kinds of marginals which I've planted into here. That was my little hack. A little grass turf upturned with a hole cut in it and plunked the plants in it, then covered it in gravel. So my idea is that that gives the plants some room to grow and hopefully Again, in four to six weeks, there'll be a lot more greenery on the water surface and under the water. There's quite a few oxygenators in there too. Let's go and have a look at the wildflower mound. Budlia, all growing after its recent hard prune. Hibernaculum log pile. That's going to be a viewing platform. I'll go up there and show you the view back to the cottage in a moment. But this is the wildflower mound, which I sowed shall we say four weeks ago I'd have to check the dates those are from last year's wildflowers then I buried the, the rest of the, the earth with the spoil from the uh, from the pond and these were sown I think for four or five weeks ago but look very very soon we're going to have a mass of beautiful wildflowers all over here those a little crop of poppies which were growing in the parterre at the front so just pulled them up, stuck them in, and we've got a little poppy field over there. Sunflowers all the way along the back. And this is just a scrubland, which I'm deliberately leaving. It looks a mess, but I'm deliberately leaving that because you want to leave some areas of the garden for nature. So that's what that is. It's to complement this, which is the wildlife area of my garden. We've got the wildlife pond, as I've already said, Budlia, log pile, and then we've got the wildflower mound up there we've got some dense holly hedge we've got damsons so this is 
a really brilliant area for wildlife. I'm going to show you something in detail in a minute. Look at that. But look at this here on this uh, on this plant. Now I talk about wildlife, and when I talk about wildlife, I don't just mean rabbits and hedgehogs and moles and birds. This is also wildlife. Look at this. That is wildlife. It's all part of nature's brilliant food chain. Tiny, tiny little black aphids. Now those are near the bottom, but not at the bottom of the food chain. And ants will come up and gather their sweet um, excrement. Blue tits will come along and peck at them. So they get left. I don't treat aphids in my garden. I just leave them. Now, of course, that is feeding off that plant and it won't be doing the plant any good, but it's all part of a larger ecosystem. Look at them. Aren't they amazing? Some of the wildflowers there starting to peek through at the back. As I say, this is self-seeded from last year's crop of wildflowers. And hopefully, now that I can leave it without putting any more soil on top, the same will happen next year with this. Can you hear the birds in the background? It's 7 at the, in the morning, 7.21 in the morning, and it's a riot of birdsong. It's so loud it wakes you up. Look at that hawthorn flower there. That's what happens when you don't prune your hawthorn hedge. You get that bloom. Amazing. I want to show you the apple tree, which is over there. And I've done another little wildflower garden at the base of it. But look, another little wildflower garden here. And these are sunflower beds. So all those plants here are sunflowers. I've done this deliberately. I want the wildflowers at the base to grow up into a dome. I want the sunflowers to be poking out of the top so that we have a dome with sunflowers out of the top of it. And then in the winter time, all those flowers will be left in situ and they'll die off, but they will have a vast array of different seeds in them, half of which will fall on the floor and seed it for next year. But the other half will feed the wildlife. It will feed rodents and birds and the sunflower heads, which will be left on, will again feed the birds and the rodents. This is my holly hedge, can you see? Uh, made from holly cuttings. They're all done, they're all taken, they're all growing. And if you, again, focus in on them, you start to see the detail on some of these little cuttings. You can start to see little leaf buds starting to emerge, which have got new leaves. And as the new leaves appear, the old ones fall off onto the ground. Wonderful. A completely free holly hedge. Of course, you can see the video on my channel. And of course, as a reminder, this area here is going to become the real garden is going to be a lovely narrow real. It's effectively my front lawn. There's the cottage, looking amazing. Uh, the bin's out, it's Monday morning. And here we are back to the start. Look at this blue sky. I think we're going to have to be careful this week. Back to 50. And here we are at my little trio of Trachycarpus. Hope you've enjoyed that little whistle stop tour at Mark's Garden UK. Have a lovely day, have a lovely week, bye for now. Mm -hmm.